Later this week, Apple's expected to announce their first few MacBooks and what will be their transition between an x86 platform and an ARM-based macOS. Now, generally, these early processors should look pretty similar to what we already see in iPhones and iPads. Now, why am I talking about Apple in a review of a Microsoft Surface product? Well, it's because Microsoft already started this transition with the release of Windows on ARM and the Microsoft Surface Pro X from last year. Now, the Surface Pro X is Microsoft's pitch on what a future of Windows on ARM could look like. But my guess is pretty soon here, they will find themselves in a position of catching up rather than being ahead. But will the Surface Pro X be enough to keep them in the race? This is Inuiso, and this is my Microsoft Surface Pro X review. Now, before I give my final review of the Surface Pro X, I'd like to talk about how it fit into my daily life. I'll wake up, watch some YouTube over breakfast, work through the day in spreadsheets or editing some videos. I'll take notes on whatever I'm reviewing at the time, maybe write some lines of code, and then after dinner, I'll settle down and practice some of my Chinese in OneNote. This is the framework by which I'll review the Surface Pro X. Because more so than other devices, the experience using the Surface Pro X is defined by its restrictions but we'll get more into that later. So watching the latest video from my favorite YouTubers should be a great experience on the Surface Pro X because it's got an excellent 13.5 inch display, great speakers, and the convenient kickstand that allows me to prop it up just about anywhere. But then a frame is dropped, and then another. And then I find myself having to pause the video, waiting for it to buffer, despite having gigabit internet and 300 megs of download speed on the Surface Pro X. And so for some reason, I found that on the Surface Pro X, I can't watch a standard 1080p YouTube video without waiting for it to load or dropping that down to a lower resolution. No worries, I'll go to the Surface support website, download the Surface Diagnostic, and then see if there's anything wrong with my Surface. But wait, the Diagnostic is a 64-bit application, which means it can't even run on the Surface Pro X. So I'll have to wait for later. I'll just finish up my breakfast and get it right into work. While working, I'll dock up my Surface Pro X to a 32-inch monitor, full-size keyboard and mouse. Thankfully, my USB-C dock works perfectly fine, as long as it's not Thunderbolt, because the Surface Pro X doesn't support Thunderbolt. While there are a couple stutters in performance when moving applications from my Surface Pro X screen to my full-size monitor, generally the performance is quite good. The Surface Pro X runs most Microsoft Office products fast enough, and for most people, it should be absolutely excellent. But for me, there's one caveat. While it usually runs Excel fast enough, as someone who often opens up multiple Excel files at one time, and usually they're large financial models, I found that the Surface Pro X often hits the cap of two gigs of RAM usage. You see, 32-bit applications can only use up to two gigs of, of RAM on your computer at any time. And so if you are a power Excel user like me, I wouldn't recommend using the Surface Pro X for Excel. I assume you might have a similar experience if you use other more RAM intensive programs. While I'd love to use the Surface Pro X for photo or video editing, the traditional Adobe applications don't run very well on the Surface Pro X while emulated, and so I have to find something on the Windows Store. I would love for a product like LumaFusion, the video editing product that comes on iOS, to be available on the Windows Store, but unfortunately, that's not an option. I'll take a quick break from work to type up some notes on whatever product that I'm reviewing. And the experience on the Surface Pro X is awesome. The keyboard and trackpad are great. And just like many Surface products before it, I say that this keyboard experience is nearly as good as most laptops. I will say that it is slightly more unstable on my lap than Surface Pros before it, but otherwise the keyboard is still excellent. Now, the trackpad is also a little bit louder than former Surface Pros which might affect you if you happen to be studying in a library, but otherwise the trackpad is smooth, responsive, and great for gestures. After work, I'll spend some time coding some of the development projects that I've been working on. Now, most of these applications are pretty simple JavaScript and PHP-based applications, so nothing too complicated for the Surface Pro X to handle, and it handles it pretty excellently. Now, thankfully, the 256 gigs of storage on my model is enough to hold most of my projects 
and any sort of photos and videos that I'd like to keep on my tablet. But generally, what's nice about the Surface Pro X is there is upgradable storage, and this is the first Surface Pro to offer it. I back up all my projects to GitHub, and thankfully, Git does work on Surface Pro X. But unfortunately, if I wanted to use the GitHub application, it is 64-bit, so I wouldn't be able to run it currently on the Surface Pro X. I'll finish the night by either practicing some Chinese characters or drafting up one of my project plans in OneNote. And the experience is excellent specifically because the new Surface Slim Pen. The Slim Pen is not only my favorite Surface Pen, but my favorite stylus that I've used on any tablet before. Because it's super lightweight, it fits really well in my hand, and it's easily rechargeable with the dock at the top of the keyboard. I just love the design of the Slim Pen, which reminds me of the carpenter's pencils that my dad would keep in his workshop growing up. So now that my day is over, how would I review my experience with the Surface Pro X? Well, beginning with design, Microsoft has always towed a line between functional and beautiful design, and more often than not, with most Surface Pros, erred on the side of function rather than beauty. And I think they really break that mold with the Surface Pro X. The curved edges, small bezels, and matte black back panel really contribute to what is a much more modern design than former surfaces. I really like the visual design of the Surface Pro X, but functionally it falls short. You see, that matte black back panel attracts fingerprints really poorly, and so I always found myself trying to wipe it off because it looked dirty and greasy. And those side bezels that are super small make using the Surface Pro X as a tablet even worse than former Surface Pros because I always found myself accidentally hitting the edges of the screen and triggering side gestures. This compounds with the fact that the Surface Pro X runs the same Windows 10 that really doesn't feel like it was made for tablet devices. That, along with the stuttering that I was getting while trying to watch YouTube and Netflix videos on the Surface Pro X, made me really not pick it up and use it as a tablet, and instead opt for an iPad or even Android tablets instead. This really made me sad because the slim pin is so incredible, and so I really wanted to use the Surface Pro X as a tablet, and so I could use the slim pin, but otherwise it really wasn't enjoyable. As a laptop, the Surface Pro X is generally incredible. The keyboard, trackpad, speakers, and slim profile all contribute to a great experience as long as you're conscious of what applications you're using and you're not using 64-bit applications for now. But all of those positives I could also apply to the traditional Surface Pro line. And that's where the problem lies with the Surface Pro X. There's really not enough differentiating factors to make it better than the traditional Surface Pro and you are limiting yourself to a subset of programs or emulation, which would lead to poorer performance relative to an Intel chip. Microsoft has been trying for years to get developers to develop applications for the Windows Store, which would really make the experience on the Surface Pro X better, but unfortunately they've been unable to do so. This will always feel like a chicken and egg problem where developers won't want to develop for Windows on ARM if there aren't enough good devices, and no one will buy those devices if there are no good programs for it. Apple might be able to get around this problem, because not only will they design the new macOS in order to run 32-bit and 64-bit legacy applications in emulation, but also it will run all iOS-based apps that you already run on your iPad or iPhone. And so they will instantly have a massive library of apps made to run on ARM chips that will dwarf the number of apps that are available on Windows 10. Now, thankfully, Microsoft doesn't seem to be giving up here because 64-bit emulation is coming for the Surface Pro X and the Surface Pro X's sequel with a slightly improved processor was just announced. So hopefully Microsoft and its partners will be able to create an ecosystem of Windows 10 on ARM devices, which will get developers to come develop for Windows 10. But for now, I don't recommend you go out and buy a Surface Pro X in anticipation of 64-bit emulation, and instead opt for a Surface Pro 7 or some other alternative. When 64-bit emulation is here, I will release an update to my review, so be sure to get subscribed to see that. Let me know down in the comments if you've had any experience with the Surface Pro X or any Surface product. And be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.